What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Alright, folks. You see the pretty face right there, and you know what's going on. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic which I have to apologize. I had it up for like a quick minute, but uh, I had technical difficulties through rendering and the mic, so that's why I get this guy right here. He's asking questions like, who's running this dog and pony show anyway? I'm like, calm down. This is Good Luck Jonathan, the ex-president of Nigeria. That's why he's always looking stumped. Because he's the ex-president. And we're, we're going to wonder about the old... Uh, well, first I'm going to give you a little inspirational quote right here. Don't forget about small minds. Because today we're going to talk about Brezik. Brezik is basically British leaving the... Um, uh, Great Britain leaving the European Union to vote. There was a vote on January... Uh, I'm not sure, on June 23rd where the voters decided to leave the EU. The date was set by Prime Minister David Cameron. When he got re-elected, he decided he would hold a referendum, a vote, if you will, for the people who want to leave the, uh, leave the EU. And the question was, like, should the UK remain a member of the EU or leave the EU? It's that simple. Now, here's why they won. A, 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 a slim majority of the folks... To, uh, to, here, here's, well, here's how it all developed. Prime Minister Cameron, she, to appease his own party and to, to, like, to undermine some EU opponents, he, uh, he uh, promised to hold a referendum on the issue if he was re-elected back, back in like 2015. Now the Conservatives, now the majority in Parliament, they have been split on this for like 40-something years, I guess. And gra there's grassroots conservatives who were generally in favor of leaving the EU. So what happened was there was no communication among the conservatives and then you got some conservatives joining these splinter groups and other bloc parties who decided to vote on leaving the EU and they got what they wanted. They left the EU. You know? I mean, and like, like the reason they said they said uh, they, want to, they want to free Great Britain from the rules that like are against their, in their mind, job creation and allows the country to choose their own trading partners. They want to be able to choose their own where the EU will say you can't do this in third. They want to be able to be at hand to trade their own trade partners. Now, the biggest trading partners of the EU are China and the United States. Now, let's get serious. If, if, if <coughs> excuse me, folks, if the Great Britons, if the Brits leave the EU, you think we're going to train with them? No, we're we're always lockstep with the with the Englanders, with Mother England. But uh, that's one of the questions. But the people that wanted to stay in the EU said, "Hey, they're like-minded with us. We got a big block. We could use this, we could use the influence around the world, the military, and the economic security." So that's what the what's the what ifs. Now people are saying, I don't know, especially Americans, you know how ignorant we are. We're saying, what's this got to do with me, buddy? You know, you got, you're talking a lot of, a lot of bull stands on there. Well, here's why it should matter to you. It should matter to you because there's fears that the EU may be falling apart. I'm not saying it is, but there's general fears that it's falling apart. Like, like the French can have a referendum, the Netherlands can have a referendum, the Italians can have a referendum. Now. I know it's over. It's overblown, but that's just one of the, some of the fears, you know. But it's it's opaque right now, so we we'll have to go with the go. Now, the second here's here's how the second one's gonna, it's going to affect America. The markets and that slow down that growth that we're having right now. Right now, we're enjoying so much growth after the Great Recession. We're loving it right now. We're spending. We're buying. We're making money, jobs, etc. Now. If this keeps going on, this is going to be bad for America. Let me explain why. Consumers make the majority of economic activity here in the U.S. If we aren't spending, we aren't growing. And what I mean is if the Americans aren't spending, America isn't growing. And how you spend determines on how you feel and the forecast ahead. Now, if they're going to forecast like rough times ahead, 
common sense tells you to sock some money away. But if they're saying that we're going to be doing good for X amount of months, even X amount of years, people will spend freely and the economy goes back up. But uh, Americans won't buy cars and homes if, you know, if they tell you, hey, man, the, the markets are looking like this for a while and it's going to be a long time when we dig out of this December 3rd. Now, with the British exit, it's already causing granite one day. I mean, it causes severe stock, you know, volatility in wild start markets. But if it continues for weeks or even months, it could cause, it, it cause American business owners and consumers to reconsider their spending plans. Like American business owners can ratchet back on hiring and or they can lay off. Or, uh, like, like I said, Americans, you can either sock the money away or you can go out and spend. The keys are going to be like significant whether you like to tumble enough, whether equity is tumble enough to have a major impact on business and the consumer confidence. You know, as a couple consumers, that would be bad news right now because that shows there's no consumer confidence in consumer spending. You probably heard this on the news. Consumer spending and confidence. Non-confidence is consumer spending. That means you, the buyer, buying something. That means you picking up America and making it great again. Well, I sound like Donald Trump. Not that I meant to. I just sound like him. No. Like I said, a cutback by consumers would be bad news because right now we're growing and if we just had to hit the wall. But like I said, if you watch a video I had before, the IMF told the feds we need to put a in it, which I'm going to talk later in, this, later in this part right here. You know, job gains have been slow this spring. And you no know, economic growth has been sluggish in the winter. But the recent pickup in spending has been one of the bright spots. You know, but they uh, they all thought that like during the summer growth would rise. But now because of this, we have to be, we have to put our our uh, our thing in a notch right now. Now another thing that could hurt. Here's another thing that's hurting and helping us: a strong U.S. dollar. Now a strong U.S. dollar sounds great. For you and me, like if I'm, it sounds great if we're going to travel. Say we're going to go to Rio to visit the Olympics, or anywhere in South America right now, because that's a bargain for us. Because they're all broke or getting ready to be broke. But uh, say you go to South America and we got a dollar, it's good for us. But if you're a U.S. business that sells product overseas, it's bad because that cost just got kicked up to you. You're you're adding on to the cost of the customer. Naturally, so the cost to sell goods and services overseas is going to raise. Well, like on Friday the 23rd, the dollar rallied against the British pound. It was up by 6.3 percent. No, that was the one. That was the biggest one-day gain since '67. You know, a strong dollar makes, like I said, a strong dollar makes products and more expensive. It just does. The cheap Nikes that they get, well, they might not be cheap anymore. And I'm not saying Nikes just because I'm I wear them. I don't wear them at all. I just because that's how it is. No one of the key, like, like, we have been in an earnings recession with profits declining for three straight quarters so far. So, with this going on, you might have to add another quarter where profits are declining. But the biggest impact economically is the dollar impact, say, a lot of chief investment officers, like a lot of chief investment advisors, strategists. They say if the dollar surges now for any period of time, we're going to see fears of profit recessions lasting longer. That's what the advisors are saying. So in short, a strong dollar lowers U.S. exports, but it rises to our traveling. It, it, it's great for our traveling. No, but the only the, the two biggest things are our manufacturing and trade are going to decline. It's sort of the backbone of the country when you think about it. The manufacturing sector, you know, relies heavily on trade. It's we're in a five month recession, you know, by a strong dollar. Because like I said, if it's a strong dollar, how are you going to sell all your services overseas? I started going old Mexico, right? So if the dollar continues, it's bad news for U.S. trade and manufacturing. And we just dug out of a hole from that last year. But it's cheaper for U.S. consumers because it could offset our consumer fears about the markets. So that means we might be spending. But that forces the Fed to rewrite, you know, like I told you, it forces the Fed to rewrite its hike playbook. Now, with the Fed's hiking the rate playbook, what happened is, like in December, the Fed was going to do four, a uh, raise height, rate hike four times this year. But uh, in June, they're only calling for one rate hike because of slow growth in job, you know, slowing job gains. I told you guys about the IMF telling us to put in a notch. Maybe they saw something that we didn't see. They probably saw this coming. I don't know. But they told us to put in a notch. 
it looks like we're going to be forced to put in a notch. Like I said, the volatility of the markets, if that continues, and if the consumers slow down spending, and if the employers slow down their hiring more, the, the Fed might have zero tax hike rates, you know, in 2016. I mean, the markets are expected to increase their expectation for a rate cut this year anyway. Now, I mean, the, the Federal Reserve plan to, you know, had planned to, the year to unfold, like the central, the central banks, the officials started year with high expectations and raising the rates in December for the first time in nearly a decade. They were going to do like a liftoff. But now the Fed is coming back down to earth. Other central banks around the world have lowered rates into negative territory, and the conversation has shifted whether the Fed should consider that move too. Then I that's what the IMF said. You know, for the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, the British exit vote be more difficult to raise interest rates. This is what international economists are saying, folks. This is not what I'm saying. I did a lot of research. A lot of economic, com you know, economic advisors and economists are saying this. Now, back to the last part of the program here. Our man David, David Cameron, he, um, poor guy, he, uh, he kind of got, you know, got the, got the shaft out of all this because he's the one that, uh, he, 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 made, he made the deal where he would have this, this referendum this year. If, if he won, he promised people. But I think what it was is he um, didn't probably feel that anything was going to come above it. But the problem is, here's his problem. He held it, he lost. But what he's doing now is, is kind of admirable. He's, um, he's, taking, he's not taking this ball going home, per se. He's, he just, he's, he's jumping up because I don't think he really feels this. I don't think he feels in his heart this is the real way to go. So I think what he's doing is he just wants to give, give a new life, a new spirit, a positive attitude to the, as you go forward. But at the same time, he's not being stupid because if, the, if it all falls down into a shit brick house, you know who gets to blame, right? The guy at the top. So he's, he's being smart by one hand and he's being smart by another. So he's in a win-win situation for him. He kept his promise. He didn't like it. Well, here, you, you want to lead on this? You go ahead because I don't have faith in it. But overall, I can't complain about anything. I, for America, it's a wait-and-see attitude. Be, but a lot of people need to be more aware of this. But I doubt they will. So, I just want to do a little video about this. Just touch upon things that could happen. You never know, they might happen. And as far as I'm concerned right now, people, if people say, well, what do you do? I'm still spending. As long as I have a job, I'm still spending. Because I, I, I see right now, where I live, and where I go to places, people are still spending. you got to damn near have a... a, a, a uh, an amber alert for these, uh, for for these for people here not to spend. We have to literally go back to another great recession. So just keep doing you, and like I said, keep keep alert. Cause like I said, by the time this hits, it's gonna hit the fan. All right, peace.